welcome to our video tutorial for this cat sweater that you can see Malibu wearing here. So I hope you enjoy it. Please like, share and subscribe and we hope to see you soon. Thanks. Okay, so for this sweater you'll need some yarn and I'm using this five weight acrylic wool blend. Um, I really like the way that this yarn works up in this sweater actually because it's warm, there's a wool component, but also that's got the acrylic, so it means that it's easy to wash. Um, and yeah, if you're taking your cat outside, then obviously that's a good, you know, good bonus if you can wash this easily. So if you want a similar look to what I'm getting, then, um, you know, go for something similar to this. But you can make this uh, in any yarn that you like, you know, finer weight, heavier weight yarn, it's entirely up to you. Um, yeah, so then you'll need a crochet hook that corresponds to your yarn and I'm going for a 5.5 millimeter for the main part of the sweater and then I'm using a 4.5 millimeter for the single crochet border. Now you don't have to use different size hooks you can just use one hook throughout that's also fine. You'll need a button and I'm going with this wood button here with the big eyes. You'll need a darning needle to weave in your ends and also do a little bit of sewing, including sewing on your button. So just make sure that you've got a needle that fits through the eyes of your button. You need some scissors. You might find some stitch markers helpful. And then a tape measure is indispensable for taking some measurements from your cat. Now I've put together a video guide to measuring your cat to size sweaters. So check that out. I'll put that in, I'll put the link to that in the description box below. Um, but you know, yeah, indispensable to have some measurements. And the main ones are the neck circumference. You would be, yeah, you need a, a circumference around the ribs. Um, probably a, a measurement along the back depending on how long you want the the sweater to be and yeah check out that video it'll show you all the measurements that you um, you know that are a good idea to have and in general the more measurements that you've got the the um, better fit you'll be able to get with your sweater okay so here's one that I've made previously in this beautiful sunny yellow I just love this color Anyway, so where we're going to start is up here, okay, we're going to start at the neck band, then we're going to increase down to where we want the belly band or the rib band to, to fall, and then we're going to start to decrease down to where we want to finish the sweater. So this is just a little half length one. You can make it to half length with a rib band, and or you can go to full length with a belly band as well. So those sort of decisions are entirely up to you. Now, um, the stitches and techniques that you'll need to know are how to slip knot onto your hook, how to create a chain, how to half double crochet, half double crochet in the back loop only to create this ribbed effect. For the main part of the, the sweater, um, you'll need to know how to uh, tie on, tie on your yarn, and then we'll be alternating to get this textured um, effect, we'll be alternating single crochet and double crochet. And then from there, you'll need to know how to weave in ends. We'll do a bit of sewing um, to join the two ends of our um, neckband together at the end. And actually, just to mention here, this one is made to slip over the head, and that's how I'm going to be making it. But if you want to, and you, you know, if your cat hates things being slipped over their head, you can actually add a couple of buttons here okay and make this button up around the neck as well okay so I just want to throw that idea in there if your cat hates things going over their head then you can absolutely do that um, I'm just going to make it one that slips over your cat's head um, so you can follow this pattern or you can choose to add the buttons and when we're sewing up the buttons we'll uh, sewing up the sorry the neck the neck area we do that at the end I'll remind you that you can make that choice if you want to and and explain how you can do that um, yeah I think from there that's that's pretty much it we'll be sewing on a button or buttons if you're choosing to add them here um, and then you know weaving weaving in ends and we'll add a single crochet border as well to add the buttonhole and also just to tidy up the edges 
Okay, so to get started, make a slip knot onto your hook, however you do that. And then you're going to make a chain to the width that you want the neck band to be. So this one here um, is quite wide, and what I tend to do is fold it, fold it over into a roll neck. But you can, you know, you can make it however wide you want, okay? I'm actually going to make this one today slightly wider because I like that, I like the roll down effect. So um, I'm going to chain 11, that's 10 stitches plus a turning chain. But you chain, it'll depend on you, the hook size you're using, your yarn you're using, what you want that neck band to look like as far as how wide you make it. Um, you, you'll chain to however many you want. Okay, so I'm going to chain my 11. 1, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 for my band. And then I'm going to have one as a turning chain. So just to give you an idea about how wide I'm going to make mine today, it's going to be, it's going to be about seven centimeters by the time I've added the stitches and there will be about seven centimeters wide. Now we're going to yarn over and place a half double crochet into the second chain from the hook. So you, as I said before your last chain is your turning chain and you're just going to place half double crochets in each chain. Working, You can work either into the front of the chain like I am or you can flip your chain over and work into this third loop at the back here. But that's just optional. I'm just going to work into the front of my chain, just one half double crochet in each of my 10 stitches and you'll work one in however many stitches you've got in your neck band. So I've got 10, so I'll just work one half double crochet in each of those 10 and that's my last one there okay now we're just going to chain one and turn and then we're going to repeat this row two until we re reach the width or sorry the length that we want for our neck band okay so it will be to your cat's neck circumference plus some extra Okay, but we'll talk about that in a moment. Let's let's continue on with row two. So we've chained one and turn. Now work your half double crochet in both loops of that first stitch. And then in the next stitch, just work in the back loop only. Okay, so pick up the back loop. So when you look from above, you can see your stitches have this V. Just work in the back loop there. And that will give us that ribbed effect to the neck band and eventually to the to the rib band okay so just do one half double crochet in the back loop only in each of these center stitches and in the first and the last stitch you'll just work through both loops and I do that just because it gives the um, the edges just a little bit more structure okay to work into work into both loops and just make sure you're not missing that last stitch, which can sometimes turn itself away from you. And that's row two. And each row from here on out will be the same as row two. So you'll go ahead and, like I said, continue on until you reach the length that you need for your neck band. Now Melba's neck circumference is around 24 centimeters. So I'm gonna go up to about, about 30 centimeters okay and that gives me plenty of leeway to slip it over her head to you know go on top of a harness some of her jacket harnesses have a you know a relatively thick strap um, around the neck so I want it to be able to fit over that and also just decide if you want this neck band to fit a bit more loosely or a bit more tightly that's that's entirely up to you and also you know just think about whether your cat is okay with having things slid over their head so if they're not that comfortable with that then you probably want to make it a bit more loose or add the button option which we'll talk about later 
So you don't need to decide that now, okay? You can work that work that out at the end. So I'm going to continue on and make my neck band. I'm just going to repeat row two. So chain one and turn, half double crochet in that first stitch, half double crochet in the back loop only for the centre stitches and the last stitch half double crochet in both loops. So go ahead and make your neck band to the length that you need and I'll do the same and meet you shortly. Okay so I've got my neck band where I want it to be there. Now um, just as a general rule you're probably adding um, about five to ten centimeters to your cat's neck circumference. So I've got about 30 centimeters there, 30, 31 centimeters for Melba's neck circumference of about 24 centimeters. Okay, so that, you know, that depends entirely on how you want it to fit as previously discussed. Okay, now what you'll do from here is you'll just yarn over and pull through and leave a nice long tail because we're eventually going to be sewing these two ends together, okay? Unless you're making, making the button version. But otherwise we'll be sewing those two ends together eventually at the end. So leave a nice long tail that you can use for sewing later. And if you want to just keep it out of your way, you can just tie, like just double up a little, a couple of times and just tie a little, little loose loose knot in there just to keep that out of your way. Okay, so now we're going to move on to make the main body of the of the sweater. So this is where your stitch markers may come in handy. Okay, so you're just going to fold your two sides into the, the center. Okay, so find, find center. So this is going to be what's on the inside, so underneath the neck here. Now, what you're going to have to work out, depending on how you want this to fit, you're going to have to work out where you want to start and end here, okay? So what we'll be doing is we'll be working along the back here, backwards and forwards, for our rows, but we're, you'll need to decide where you want to begin and end here, okay? So with this one, um, I've started my rows just inside of that that halfway point at the sides there. I'm gonna I'm gonna um, wrap it around a little bit more for Melba on on this new one, but you know it, it's entirely up to you how you know how you want it to fit around the sides. Now, bearing in mind that you don't want any restriction of your cat's movement, um, you want to you know yeah. If, if you want it to be more on the sit like higher up on the shoulders then you'll start wider and if you want it to be wrap around a little bit more a bit more coverage you would start um sort of from about here you know it, it's it's it, again entirely arbitrary this is for you to fit on your cat and what i would recommend that you you do is perhaps wrap this around their neck and see where you want it to fall. So we're going to be, just to talk forward a little bit, we'll be increasing, let's just fold this in so I can show you this side. So we'll be increasing down each side until we get to where we want to place the first rib band. So just get an idea from, on your cat, how, like how wide across the shoulders you want this to be, and then how it's going to decrease down to where you put, sorry, increase down to where you put the belly button, uh, the, sorry, the rib band, the belly button, <laughs> I've got a button in my head in here, um, in the, where you want to place the rib band, okay, so that's just to show you kind of where we're going, and we're going to be increasing, obviously, down both sides, Okay, if you want to, actually you don't have to increase down both sides, but we'll talk about that in a moment. So, yeah, so you want to place your stitch markers where you want the your rows to, to end and begin. So I'm going to bring mine in quite a bit more this time. So I'm going to start there, and then you want it to be on the, the corresponding side this way. Okay, so I've got... If I count my rows, I've got one, two, three on the fourth one. One, one, two, three. I want to actually, I think I want to do it here. 
Actually, let's measure that. That's probably a more accurate way to do it. Let's measure it from the side, actually. Four centimetres from the side. Yeah, so here. So actually, that is one, two, three, four. Yep, yeah, that's right. So you'll mark your, your beginning and end of your rows. So for me, you can see from this previous one, it's going to be quite a bit further in. And that will also depend on how big your, your neck band is too. Right, so um, you know how you fit the neckband. If it's a lot looser, um, you you know you might want it to start further in. If it's a bit tighter, you maybe want it to start slightly more further out. Okay, but yeah, if you've got your cat here, this is it's ideal because you can try this on your cat as you go. Okay, so that's our in and our out. So now we're going to just flip this over, and we're going to tie on at that first stitch marker there. So we're going to be working between the two stitch markers now. Okay, wherever they are for you. So I'll take out that stitch marker. And the way I tie on is I just insert my hook into the work. So I'm actually going to be working um, on top of each row. So that's one row there, that's the second row. I'm going to be working my stitches on top of those rows. So I'm inserting my hook in the in the top of this row here. I just place my yarn over top of my hook, pull up a loop, and I chain one to secure it, and then just pull that nice and tight. Now you can tie on however you tie on. That's just how I do it. And I'm going to work in my tail as I work across. Now, um, every row is going to start with a single crochet. Okay, we're going to be alternating single crochet and double crochet, but every row will start with a single crochet. It'll end with, with one of the two, but it will always start with a single crochet. Okay, so if you want to chain another one here, you can, just to give you that extra height. But otherwise, I'm going to work my first single crochet back into that same space where I've tied on. And then in the top of my next row, I'm going to add a double crochet. And then the top of my next row, a single crochet. Now you don't have to follow those row, rows exactly. If you want your stitches to be a bit more closer together, a bit closer together, you can, um, you know, you you don't have to follow the the tops of the rows. So that's a single crochet, double crochet for the next one. Yeah. And then a single crochet in the top of the next row for me. And then... A double crochet. So go ahead and alternate, you know, wherever you're placing your stitches. It, it, it doesn't matter if you've got more stitches than rows here. That, that's, that doesn't matter at all. So go ahead and place your single crochet alternating with double crochet all the way along here until you get to this um, next stitch marker. So I'm going to go ahead and do the same and I'll meet you once I get over here. And just to mention, I'm working in my tail, but you don't have to. It's, um, you know, you can weave it in at the end or you can work it into your single crochet border later. But I'm, I'm working my tail in now. Okay, I'm just at my next stitch marker. So I'm going to take that out and put my last stitch in, which for me happens to be a single crochet. But for you, it might be something different. And that, it doesn't matter what you finish with. That's fine. Okay, so that's our row one. That's just our kind of foundation row. Okay, so from now on, we're going to increase, okay? And it's up to you how quickly you increase, okay? Now you can, I'm going to increase and at, at both ends of my rows. You can increase at just one end if you want to increase more slowly. You can increase every second row if you want to increase even more slowly. It's entirely up to you. So an increase is just placing two stitches in one stitch in, in the same stitch. So I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to increase fairly rapidly and I'm going to increase on both both ends of my rows. Now, um, yeah, so what we're going to be doing is pretty much increasing now um, all the way down to where we'll place the rib band. Okay, so yeah, you can increase more slowly and if you start off increasing more quickly and then you decide you want to slow down your increases, you can start 
you know, increasing at the end of each row or the end and beginning of each row. And then you can just increase at the beginning of each row if you want to slow down your increases. So you can, you know, you can really tailor this to how quickly you want this to increase and where you want it to sit around the side of your cat. Okay, so chain one and turn. And so because we're doing this alternating pattern, the the beginning and end of the row it can be a little bit, let's say messy, but not too messy. But it can just be a little bit messy. And tr try not to overthink it, okay? Just just go with with what I'm about to say. Okay, so we're chaining one. Now, every row, like I said be at the beginning, you know, I said before, is going to start with a single crochet. So put your single crochet in there. Now, if you're increasing, your next stitch will be a double crochet. So place that double crochet back in the same stitch. Okay, so we've got two stitches in that first stitch. One single crochet, one double crochet. Now, what you need to start to do is start to recognize where double crochets sit and where... Oh, that's my tail. Let me just snip off that excess. So where single crochets go and where double crochets go, okay, in, in the stitches from the previous row. Now, let me just pull that out. So my second stitch here is going to be a single crochet, okay? And you'll start to recognize them. So this... When it looks like that, that's a single crochet. When it's got this more of a hole, it's a double crochet. Okay, so you need to recognize that. So each row will start with a single crochet, and then if you're increasing, a double crochet, and then your next stitch may be a double crochet or a single crochet. So you've just got to go off what your second stitch is and start your alternating from there. Okay, so it doesn't matter at the beginning if you've got two double crochets together. It's no, not a big deal. Okay, you just want to go off what your second stitch is and work the appropriate stitch into that second stitch. So it might be a single crochet, it might be a double crochet, but you've just got to, you've just got to recognize this. So for me, it's a single crochet because that's what a single crochet space looks like. And that's what a double crochet space looks like. And that might just take you a little bit to recognize. But you can see that's a single crochet, that's a double crochet. Single crochet, double crochet. There's a bit of a hole there. Okay. So you'll get to know that pretty quickly. And so we're going to just alternate from here. Okay, so I've done my increase. And then I'm going to single crochet and double crochet. Because that's how mine fall. And it also, it's good because it also shows you, or single crochet, it also shows you if um, you've put in the center here, not including the end stitches, but if you've put two, accidentally two single crochets together, for example, it'll, it'll show you because you'll, you'll be able to see quite clearly where your double crochets go and where your single crochets go. And through this central area, you want to always be alternating, okay, so you get that nice textured even pattern okay so there's no mistakes through the center here you haven't placed accidentally two of the same stitch together so you want to alternate your single and then your double okay so continue on do that alternation alternating all the way down to your last stitch and I'm going to increase in my last stitch again so I'll uh, I'll meet you back down here Okay, so I'm down at the end here. I've got two stitches left. My next stitch is a single crochet. And then I'm going to do in this last stitch a double crochet, just to keep the alternating, and a single crochet. So once again, it doesn't matter what you finish on at the end there. You might finish on a double crochet and it, it, it doesn't matter at all, okay? Now we're going to chain one and turn. And as I said, every row starts with a single crochet. And if you're increasing, then a double crochet. If you're not increasing, just work as one single crochet in that first stitch. Now check your second your 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 second stitch. What is it? For me, it's a single crochet. Okay. You it might be a double crochet, and you might have two double crochets together. No big deal. Okay, so mine's a single crochet, so I start my alternating from here double crochet, single crochet, and then double crochet. And then I continue on with that alternating. 
Working my increases, for me, I'm increasing at the beginning and the end of each row, working my increases, and then I just keep working that down until I reach the area where, um, like I said, we want to place the rib band. And we're going to flatten it out, not increase. Okay, so we're going to flatten it out so we can add this, this band. And then we're going to start our decreases. Okay, so keep working. This is my row... My row two, be your row two as well. So working single crochet, double crochets, all the way down. And I'll meet you, wait, meet you down the end here. One more time, we'll we'll end and begin a row together. And then I'm going to let you continue on, and and you know adjusting your decreases as sorry your increases as you need to. And uh, yeah, I'll see you soon. Okay, I'm down once again at my last two stitches. So my previous stitch was a double crochet, single crochet, and then double crochet, single crochet for, is how it's worked out for me in this last stitch. Okay, it might be different for you. Okay, so you can see we're starting to increase there now. Okay, chaining one and turn. Single crochet always starts the row. Double crochet if you're increasing. And then check your next stitch. What is it? For me, it's a single crochet. So I'm just, it's just falling for me that I can increase, increase and then it's falling back into my alternating pattern. But that's just, that's just how it's fallen for me. It may not be the same for you. As I said, you can just add two double crochets together um, there, but j just follow whatever your second stitch is telling you to do as far as single crochet or double crochet Then that's where you start your alternating pattern from okay, so hopefully that's all clear enough now for you to continue on um, and finish off your increases um, down to, down to the the rib band. So I'm going to go go ahead and uh, yeah finish off um, a bit a few more rows here, and uh, you know you can try it on your cat again and just see where you want exactly the rib um, the rib band to fall. So you know every cat has a, a different proportion. If you take a measurement from the, your cat's neck down to where you know immediately behind their back legs, which is where you want to start the rib band. Then you know you can you can work to that measurement. So I'm going to yeah keep working for a few more rows, and I'll come back to you when I'm getting down towards the area that I um, need to start adding in my um, rib band, which we'll be adding in after. But we just need to start to flatten out the sides a little bit so we can add that rib band in. Okay, so I'll catch you soon. Okay, so here I am. I've done all my increases, and I'm. This is falling just behind Melba's back legs now. So, sorry, front legs, just behind her front legs, okay? So this is about, I've done about 10 centimeters here. And that might be different for your cat. In fact, it most likely is. So you want to, I mean, a good idea, once again, just try it on your cat. See where your increases are falling and see where you want to stop doing your increases. And, um, yeah, go from there. So we're going to start sort of flattening it off here so we just flatten it off for a few rows or however many rows you want to flatten it off for so I'm going to start now just not increasing anymore so I'm just going to go to rows where I don't increase at all so I'll just chain one and turn and my first stitch is always that single crochet and Got being guided by my next stitch. It's also a single crochet. And then I'll start my alternating into double and single. So I'm going to go and do um, quite a few rows um, flattened out. Okay, so we'll be adding the, the rib band at the end. So, yeah, so continue to flatten out this area here and then I'm going to go I don't know it's I'm probably going to go for a good sort of five centimeters like, like I told you I'm going to make this this one slightly longer than this one this is just a half length one I'm going to make this one slightly longer um, so I'm going to go for a good you know this is about three centimeters that I flattened it out on this on this short 
jacket. Um, so I'm going to probably flatten out for a good five centimeters, maybe even more. I'll just see how how that goes, and then I'll come back to you um, once we, you, we want to start decreasing. So you stop where you you want to start decreasing. Now make sure you do enough rows um, without any increase or decrease that you can um, put a a uh, belly band so or a rib band okay so um, my one I made without the without the single crochet border or oh, let's add with the single crochet border um, it's about four and a half centimeters and I'll probably do mine slightly wider actually so I want a good yeah good five centimeters of no increase or decrease okay now the other thing you want to think about here too is whether you want to add a leash hole or not Okay, if you're making just a short one, you probably don't need it. You can just fit your, your leash underneath if you're taking your cat outside on leash um, while wearing the sweater. Okay, um, so I'm going to add a leash hole and I'll come back to you. I'm going to add a few more rows before I add my leash hole. So I'll come back to you when I'm going to add my leash hole and just show you how I do that. And um, yeah, so I'll, I'll, I'll make sure that I'm placing it where Melba's um, harness is, where the, you know, the leash attachment is. So I need to go for a few more rows yet. So I'm going to continue on. Um, you do the same. I'm going to go with my just no increase or decrease rows for, you know, good five to ten centimeters. And um, yeah, before I get there I'll, or to the end of that area, I'll show you what I'll do with the, the leash hole. So I'll see you shortly. Okay, so I'm getting close to where I want to add my leash hole. So what you'll do is you'll just make sure you're getting your leash hole in the center. So you can you can make a stitch mark where the center of the hole would be. So for me, uh, where's my stitch marker? Here it is. So for me, that's the center of my of my jacket. So I want to make my start my my uh, leash hole before I get to that central po central point. So I'm just moving along here. So I'm going to stop here and I'm going to chain. So I've got one, two, and then the third stitch is my central point, and I'm going to go four, five, and then so I'm going to bring my um, my next stitch. Actually, I think what I'll do is I'll just skip four. One, two, three, four. Five. No, actually, no. I will. I'll go all the way to that, to that next, to that next single crochet. So one, two, three, four, and five. So however many you're skipping, you'll chain. So that's there, and then I'll put my next single crochet in there, and that gives me my leash hole. Now, what I've measured how um, how long her harness is and where the leash um, attachment falls and it's about 13 centimeters so I've gone just a little bit longer because you don't want it right on top of it you want it sort of coming in at an angle okay so that's where I've placed mine so um, yeah 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 so you'll just have to work out where you need yours to be and you'll just however big you want it to be you'll just skip that number of stitches and you'll chain the same number okay so super easy Super easy, no, you know, no difficulty if you do want to add that leash hole in. Now I'm going to continue on. I've still got a few more rows to go before I want to start decreasing. So um, yeah, I'll meet you when I'm starting to decrease. Oh, and when you work across your chain, you'll just continue with your alternating stitches. Okay, so I'm ready to start decreasing now, and um, you know you'll you'll decide when you want to start as well. So as with the increasing, you can decide how quickly you decrease. So you'll just chain one and turn, and to decrease, you'll just be using single crochet decrease. Okay, in those first two stitches. So single crochet decrease in those first two stitches and you can do it at the beginning and at the end of your of your row or you can just do it at the beginning you can decrease every second row you can you know you get to decide how you know how quickly you want this to taper and what sort of shape you want for your for your sweater okay so this is a great pattern because you you have so many 
you know, creative decisions that you can make with this. You can really make this sweater, um, you know, whatever shape, size, length that you want. It's very adaptable to, you know, to whatever your purpose is or, you know, how you want this to look. So I'm going to continue on with some rows of decreasing. Now, just a few things to um, consider here as you're decreasing is and, and um, working to the length that you want for your sweater. Just be careful that you're not you know, taking it all the way down to the tail. So the base of the tail is a really sensitive area for your cat in most cases. So it's best if your sweater doesn't rub against the tail. Okay, so yeah, think about that. The other thing is when your cat sits, um, that it's not too long, that it's um, sort of dragging on the ground, okay? And the other thing to think about is how, how you want it to sit along the sides of your cat as you move down towards the base um, or the, you know, the base, yeah, the base of the sweater. So, you know, just think about all those things and, and you know, the practical the practical considerations or, as well as the aesthetic um, considerations and um, shape your sweater from here and make it as long as you want it to be. So I'm going to do that and I'll meet you, um, yeah, once I've done that. And hopefully I've made it clear um, with your decrease at the beginning of the row. So you'll just decrease in the, the first two stitches and then your next stitch is di just dictated by whatever it is. So for me it's that, that hole, so it's a double crochet. Okay, so you'll just, and then you just continue alternating from there. So if you decide you want to decrease at the end of your row as well, you'll just, no matter what your, you know, your alternating pattern is, you'll just single crochet decrease in the last two stitches. Okay, so you can decrease at both ends if you want to. Okay, so uh, yeah, see you soon. Okay, so I'm decreasing and I still want a bit more length, but um, I want to decrease, start to decrease a bit more quickly. So um, yeah, I just wanted to come back and let you know that that's, you know, that's definitely an option. You can start off decreasing um, more slowly and then you can start to decrease more quickly. So, you, you know, shaping it however you want. So I'm going to start to decrease at the beginning and end of each row, but I'm getting really close to where I want the length to be. Okay, so I've tied off there. I've made my sweater as long as I wanted it to be. So I've just yarn over, yarn, yarned over, pulled through, and snipped off my end. So just to give you an idea how long my sweater is, is it's 30 centimeters down to the base from the neckband, and I've, it's 14 centimeters down to my leash hole. So that if that just gives you a you know, just a general idea of where I'm at. So now you'll add your rib band. So you'll just take one of the sides. So one of these flattened, these flattened sides. Now you get to decide too here. If, do you want um, your, so if I show you my, my other one. So what I did is I made the, the rib band the same as the neck band, okay? So you can choose to do that. So you can choose to do that half double crochet ribbing, or you can choose to do um, continue this textured pattern. For me, I like to do make it match the the neck band, but that's just that's just my preference. So if you want to um, make it match the neck band like I'm doing. You'll, you'll decide how, how wide do you want it to be, okay? So I've got, so you'll be tying on somewhere here. So for me, just make sure you're tying on in the right place. So I know that when I stopped increasing, that was just behind Melba's back legs. So I'm going to tie on here. So I'll just tie on as I did at the neckband before. Just chain one. Now, if you just want to do, if you want to, so if you want to do your half double crochet ribbing, what you'll do is you'll half double crochet back into that space where you tied on. And then you'll just place half double crochets, however many um, to equal how wide you want this, want this uh, rib band to be. Now, if you wanted to continue the this textured pattern, which is entirely up to you, you would tie on and do single crochet, double crochet, single crochet, double crochet. 
Okay, so you could do that as well. That's, you know, that's just a, in, completely a design choice. For me, I like it to match the, the neckband. I think that looks... That looks best. So that's what I'm. That's what I'm doing. So I'm going to place half double crochets. So how many have I got there? I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. So I think that's going to be yeah wide enough. I could make it one more. No, I think that's going to be good. I think six, six stitches wide is going to be fine for me. So I'm going to chain one and turn. And so if you're doing the same texture as the main part of the sweater, then you will just continue that alternating pattern. First stitch, always single crochet, and then you'll just alternate. But if you're doing like me, you'll do your half double crochet ribbing as you did at the neckband. So the first stitch, work through both, both loops, and then you'll do your back loop only. Half double crochet ribbing. Oops, what's that there? Oh, I'm going to have to go back and fix that. But anyway, I'll just continue here for a moment. So you'll do your half double crochet ribbing. So in those central stitches, work in the back loop only. And then in the last and the first stitch, you'll work into both loops, just to give you that little bit more structure on the sides. And then you'll just continue for however long you need your, your rib band to be. So for Melba... Her, her circumference is about 36 centimeters or you know the, uh, around her ribs so I'm going to not have to make too much my belly band will be you know it doesn't have to be very long it's gonna so I'm already at 36 centimeters at the edge of the of the sweater so I'm probably going to make it about to about 45 because it can overlap obviously so you well you 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 absolutely want it to see how you can you know you'll just place your button wherever it needs to be so it can overlap you know quite a long way up into the sweater where you place your button so I'm gonna you know you just make your belly band however or your rib band however long you need it to be and yeah for me I'm probably not going to go yeah so oh, I mean I'll just keep going for a few more rows and I'll and I'll see how how long I want it to be and where I want it to fall with the button on the other side um, and you, you know you just work that out for yourself you take your cat's measurement and work out where you need it or want it to be and how much overlap you want to have on the other side so I'm going to continue on I'm going to do my half double crochet ribbing and I'll make it as long as I want it to be and I'll see you shortly. Okay, so I'm at as long as I need for my um, my band. And what I've how I've worked this out is so here's the end of my band. So from there I want a little bit of leeway. So she, her, her Melba's measurements are about 36 around her ribs if I'm doing, you know, measuring snugly. So I want a couple of centimeters of of leeway and especially if she's wearing a harness underneath so my button's going to land you know around here and that's fine with me okay so now what we're going to do is we're going to um just from here we're going to do our start our single crochet um single crochet border so and with the single crochet we want to create our buttonhole as well but we're going to do that at the end okay so what we're going to do is work just continue on here work all the way around around the border all the way around single crochet border all the way around up and around across here and down here okay and we're going to create our buttonhole but first what we need to do is we need to sew these two bits together okay so before we do our single crochet so just you know just pull out your pull out your yarn and just leave that leave that attached okay so we're coming back to that so what we need to do now is we just need to sew together our neckband pieces so take your take your needle and you could do this with slip stitch if you wanted to I, I prefer to sew it I think it's neater to sew it Oops, I've got an end that just needs a snip off there. Okay, so I'm going to just, so decide which is your, you know, how you want this, which is your inside, which is your outside. 
and I'm just going to just do a simple simple stitch so I'm going to take the inner the inner loop on that stitch and then the chain and just work across just to stitch those together those two sides together and then when we work our single crochet border around that's all already all already sewn so I'm going to just go ahead and you you know you sew this however you want to sew it just make sure that you're sewing the corresponding the corresponding sides and you can weave in your your other tails if you want to or you can just work them into your your single crochet border so now's the time if you want to weave in any ends do that I'm not going to weave in my ends because I'm going to just incorporate them into my single crochet border so I'm just going to finish this off and uh, yeah and I'll meet you in a moment okay so I've just finished sewing that together and I'm just going to just reinforce this bottom area a little bit just with a couple of stitches across okay and then you can just do a little just a little finishing knot if you want to we're going to incorporate that into our single crochet border now I said something a bit silly before actually we'll be working we will be working around the top and actually all of this single crochet border is um, is optional and you know you don't have to we will we will be working across the, around the top if you want to but actually we won't be working all the way around from here we'll be working along here so not along the top now we've sewn here of course we can't so we have to work all the way along here down around here and around to the other side and then we'll create our buttonhole so reinsert your hook if you took that out now you've sewn on your sewn your now you've sewn your neck together you can start on that single crochet border so we're going to work all the way around so essentially all that is is you're just placing one single crochet just evenly spaced around your work now again this is entirely optional okay you don't have to do this border if you like the finish as it is you, you don't have to so what you would do is you'll skip forward to the buttonhole if you don't want to do this um, single crochet border and I'll I'll put the timestamp where you stick skip forward for the buttonhole and uh, yeah otherwise you'll come with me placing oh and actually what I've forgotten that I was going to do and I do prefer to do it actually what I was going to do is change my change my my hook size sorry I forgot to mention that as well but you still you don't want to do this these you know this border super tight you want the stitches to be you know relatively loose otherwise you'll you know you'll you'll buckle the project so you can you can choose to change your hook size if you want to um, it's a good idea to if, if you don't want to do it for the single crochet border you don't want to change your hook size for the border you at least change your hook size for the the buttonhole it's potentially a good idea um, yeah yeah that's that, but again it's you know all these decisions are up to you so I'm just going to see how this is looking because usually I do change change my hook size and I just want to see how that's how that's looking I actually now I'm seeing it I think I might want to go back to my other hook size yeah you know sometimes these things happen you you start something so with the other one I, I changed the hook size and this one I don't think I'm going to I think I was going on my my um, my first instinct before and I think I'm happier with it being a bit looser yeah so you know sometimes these things happen and you just change it up according to how it's looking yeah I think that's going to be better for this one okay so I'm going to go ahead and finish off my single crochet border now I've decided what I'm I'm actually doing so work your single crochets all the way around 
underneath the neck and then down the other side and you'll you'll stop here because this is where we'll start our our buttonhole okay and if you want to change the hook size you can if you don't want to you don't have to now if you've decided not to do the single crochet border like I said you'll you'll skip forward to just creating the buttonhole you will you just won't continue around you'll just go straight back and do the buttonhole here essentially the buttonhole is just a chain in a in the size that accommodates your button okay so I'm going to finish off this single crochet border and I'll meet you shortly Okay, so I'm just working my single crochet border around. Now, just to, just to mention a couple of things here. Obviously, you don't have exact places to put these stitches. So just place them as best you can around the, around the border. And also, just be careful not to make them either too far apart or too close together. Okay, so you don't want them um, too close together. Otherwise, the edges will be all, um, you know, sort of baggy. You want it to be the tension to be just right, and sometimes that means changing the hook, and sometimes it uh, it doesn't. Okay, so for me, for this yarn and the way that I've made this sweater, it's just it's gonna it's better actually with the the same hook size. So you know, it's just how things work out sometimes. So um, yeah, I'm just placing these single crochets just evenly spaced around these edges where there's no actual stitch in the areas where there's actual stitch so along the bottom here that's obviously much easier you just place one in each stitch and that's a, a tail I've just worked in there I'll just snip off the excess and I'll continue working around I'm about halfway so I'll continue working around and I'll see you soon okay so I'm round at the the other side of my rib band let me I'm just placing my last single crochet in there and then we're going to and one in there and now we're going to uh, chain for our buttonhole so it'll depend on how big your button is and how many you want to chain now I am going to change my hook size here just for the buttonhole just so the 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 chains are a little bit tighter and I'm going to put another stitch back in that corner stitch and then I'm going to place one I um, don't need um, you know I don't need the whole width of my of my the bo the base of the band to be buttonhole okay so I'm going to I've done two in that corner one one here and then I'm going to chain one two three four and five and then I'm going to take my button and I'm going to, so on the opposite side I'm going to single crochet and I'm just going to check with my button and I know that's going to be fine. Yeah. So you just want to check your button and check that it's, you know, you've got your buttonhole where you want it to be. And then I'm just going to do a last single crochet in there. Okay. And so now we're, we're round at the other side. So what I'm going to offer you here is you can just slip, slip stitch to join if you want to. But I'm going to offer you the invisible finishing stitch here. So to finish this off, you just pull out pull out a length of yarn. So don't yarn over and pull through or anything. Just, just um, pull out a loop. Snip off, snip off the, the a length. Just, you know, just a normal tail length. And you'll take your darning needle. Oh, I've got an excess bit of tail there as well. Let's just snip that off. So I've worked all of my tails into my edging. So how you can finish this off so it's a really nice, neat finish is you'll just thread your needle. And you'll... We're just going to do this invisible finishing stitch, which is basically just um, sewing a stitch. Okay, so find, so for me, this is my first stitch here. Okay, so where I started my round. So I'm just going to go underneath that stitch. Okay, and then I'm going to come back down through the center of my last stitch. Okay, into the, the back of my work. So I've basically just sewn a stitch over top of that. Um, you know my finishing area so you can't tell where I've finished okay and then this this excess tail just gets woven into the back okay so yeah 
yeah, that's um, how you can finish it off nice and neatly. So you won't be able to see where your beginning and end was. I love that way to finish off. It's just a nice, easy way to finish off that looks super neat. And then I'll just weave in this tail into the back. And then well, you've got the decision of whether you want to do your single crochet edging at the top of the neck. So let's just say that's pretty good. I might just double back. So, you know, hopefully you're kind of aware of how to weave in an end. You just weave it into the back of your work. And it's always a good idea just to double back, but not exactly where you've come. Just make sure that you're... Uh, you're securing that well. So I'll just secure it along the edge there and snip off the excess. So you get to de oops, button, button dropped. So you get to decide if you want to, um, you know, if you want to do a single crochet round around here. I'm actually not going to for this this one. Um, if you do want to just tie on just to one of the sides of of the centerpiece here underneath here and then you'll just do a single crochet border and then you can do that invisible finishing stitch as well to finish off here in the center. But this time I'm not actually going to do that. I think I just like that that sort of sort of raw edge along the top there. I think that looks kind of kind of cool. But what I am going to do is I'm just going to finish off this just neat neatening up. See see what tends to happen is you get this this gap in between or well I do anyway. Maybe you didn't, but I I do. So I just like to with my with my tail end I just like to just close that up and you can see that looks you know that looks nice and neat there. And then I'll just put my yarn through to the back and I'll weave that tail in down the back here too. So I'll just finish that quickly off camera and um, yeah we'll come in back and we'll sew the button on together. Okay now what I realized too that I um, forgot to mention is that it, you you know rather than sewing this area you could have placed buttons Okay, so what you would have done in that case, and I, I'm really sorry that I didn't mention it earlier, you would, um, so you would have done your, your single crochet border, and you would have worked your single crochet up the center here, and then um, continued on, but you, and then you could have created buttonholes down the other side, okay, just as we did for this, uh, for this one here, where you just create a chain, and you know, you might have you might want just one button underneath here or you want, might have done two buttons, you know. So that's also an option if your cat absolutely hates things being put over the head and it, you know, causes them some distress. Um, so you can, you could do that. You'd just continue your, you wouldn't have sewn. You would have just continued your single crochet border up the side and then um, you probably would have gone around and then back to here. And then you could create your buttonhole on this side and then just continue on with your single crochet border. Okay? So once again, apologies that I didn't mention that earlier, but, you know, better late than never. So that, that's definitely an option for this, um, for this sweater. Now, you can see it's very close to being finished. All we've got to do now is just, it looks super cute. I love it. So now I've just got to sew on my button. So you'll need to, you know, take your measurement another end there that needs snipping off so you'll need to you know have your measurement correct and then just add a little bit extra so for Melbourne as I said I'm going to do it at about 38 centimeters actually I need to do it on this side so from the buttonhole all the way across so I want to sew my button on about here and you can, you know, once again, you can use your stitch marker to mark where you want your button to be. That's where mine's going to be, about there. And then you will thread your needle with just some yarn. And if, if your yarn is too thick for your button, you can either split your yarn or you just, you know, just use some thread or, you know, whatever works for you to to sew on your button but I've got really nice big eyes in this button so I can just use my yarn but you can see you can sometimes not with all yarns but you can sometimes just 
um, split your like your yarn. So especially this is a two ply yarn, but you could you know you could split it in two, or even into if you're using four ply, you could um, you know split it into one of the strands. So I'm just going to place my button over my stitch marker. So you'll just sew your button on, however your button dictates. So for me, I'll just do it like this. That's a very easy button to sew on, just up and down. So you just want to make sure that button's nice and secure. As uh, I mentioned before, you never want the button to be a choking hazard. So make sure it's on there nice and securely oops let's do this one more up and down and then of course you'll um, just weave in these ends at the back and you can tie a little a little knot here at the back just to make sure it's even more secure and then you'll weave in your two tail ends so I'm going to do that off camera and I'll meet you shortly and we'll finish off together okay and there I'm done and you're done so congratulations I love this sweater it's it's uh it's super cute I love the texture and uh this, you know, the chunky neckline. I, I just think it's a great pattern. I love it. It's easy to size. Um, you know, it's it's easy for your cat to move in. It's a really great pattern. So I hope you like it as much as I do. And uh, please send along your photos of your cat wearing his or her sweater. I would love to see, you know, what choices you've made with regards to sizing and length and, and how you've increased and decreased. So send those along to catventurous.community at gmail.com or you can tag us on social media at catventurous.com crochet so uh yeah thanks again as always for being here and we hope to see you soon thanks very much bye <laughs> enough okay hang on one more one more let's go one more go one more Ready? No. You had enough? Okay, sweet.